Hey guys, this is Kendall Terry, and this is uh, part one of um, really understanding atoms and the chemistry of life um, that's behind uh, cells. So you can see here on the screen, we're looking at chapter two, which is chemistry of life. So why is chemistry important to biology? You know, you're in a biology course. Why are we talking about chemistry? Well, it's important because it's what all life has in common. Um, you can look at carbs, proteins, fat. We're going to look at that. That's very important to uh, what we do. The emergence of properties in the cells. Why do the cells act the way they do? Why do they have certain things that are causing them to react the way they do? All of that's important to biology, and all of that goes back to chemistry. Um, the other thing is looking at energy for organisms. This is one of those underlying themes that, that we're going to talk about the entire semester is energy. Where does it come from? Who makes it? Who needs it? How do you get it? And then water, um, of course, is essential for uh, cell function. It's essential to life. Without water, there is no life. And then biology, we look at as it being a multidisciplinary uh, field. It looks at several different disciplines. It looks at several different things. And it takes into account all these different disciplines in understanding life and why life does what it does and how it does what it does. Here you've got the bombardier beetle. Understand what's going on with this organism while it does what it does. It's a fascinating organism, but it works because of chemistry. There's two substances inside of this beetle that if they react inside of the beetle, they destroy the beetle but they don't react until they're being pushed out of that beetle and then they come together and that allows them to uh, get away from predators. It's fascinating, it's, it's an awesome uh, bug to look at and it works because of chemistry and that's why we're looking at chemistry and biology. A little overview of what we're doing, we're gonna talk about atoms and chemical bonds and we're gonna look at properties of water, uh, solutions, acids, bases, biomolecules, and then finally chemical reactions in the body. We'll probably only do about half of that in each lecture. So we're looking at the first section is nature of matter. Matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are the smallest unit of matter that cannot be broken down. Uh, that cannot be broken down by chemical means, meaning it's as low as it can get. For instance, you've got an element in essence here that's a nucleus with protons and neutrons in it. And then you've got an electron cloud, which are electrons that surround that nucleus. Let's look at that a little bit more in depth. Of course, you've got an image of the atom here. You can look at the electrical charge. The proton, which you see here in yellow, has a positive charge. The neutron, which you see there in orange, has no charge. And the electrons here in green have a negative charge. So the negatives are attracted to the positives. And all of this working together is what makes up this element that reacts and does all the cool things that, that we look at. Matter consists of chemical elements in pure form and in combinations called compounds. And atom, atoms form chemical bonds like covalent, hydrogen, and ionic. We're gonna take a little minute to look at each of those. A covalent bond shares electrons to form molecules. So they're, uh, they don't, uh, one of them doesn't hold on to the electrons longer than the other one. So you've got two hydrogens, for instance. Both of them want two electrons in their outer energy level. Um, there's a little bit here more detail than what we're going to uh, understand for this course in sequence. But we've got electrons that want, that the hydrogen wants two electrons, so they share those two electrons equally. There's no charge of the molecule because everybody's happy. Everybody's holding on to electrons, but they're all holding on to them equally. So there's no net charge. Same with oxygen down here. It wants eight in its outer energy level. So it's going to share uh, some in here that you can see. And the ones that it's sharing are allowing it then to be uh, complete, uh, but everybody's getting equal share and equal access. So that's no net charge. In a hydrogen attraction, uh, the, in a hydrogen bond, this is an attraction between polar molecules. This is a very important one to chemistry because we talk about it all the time in why DNA is the way it is, um, proteins and the shape that they have. There's all kinds of things that cause that are caused because of these hydrogen reactions. This is unequal sharing of electrons. You're talking about polar molecules, like the water molecules here. They have a negative charge on one side, a positive charge on the other, because they're sharing electrons, but they're unequal sharing. So this creates a polar molecule where it has a negative side and a positive side, 
So then the positive and negatives of other molecules will be attracted somewhat to each other, not strong attractions, but a little bit of an attraction, and that's, in this case, a hydrogen attraction or bond. They're weak bonds that can be taken apart, but they do hold molecules together. When you're looking at ionic substances, those gain or lose electrons. Um, so now instead of us sharing an electron, I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you. Well, if I give you an electron, I become more positive, and you're going to become more negative. So we're going to be attracted then to each other. And that's what you see here, uh, the unequal number of electrons and protons. So that creates charges, and those charges are attracted to each other. NaCl, sodium and chlorine. Sodium gives chlorine, you can see it on the screen here, an electron. As it gives it an electron, sodium becomes positive, chlorine becomes negative. So now the positive negatives are attracted to each other. So uh, if we talk about water, water is that medium for life. Whenever we look at planets, we look at whether there's life on that planet by the presence or absence of water. So it's very important. What are the properties of it? Well, there's a couple properties of water. Water stores heat efficiently. And you know this if you um, go to boil water. It, it doesn't just instantly sit on the stove. It starts boiling. It takes a while because it, it, it takes a while for that heat to kind of go throughout the whole thing and it, it spreads that heat out and then you'll get some evaporation that's taking some of that heat away. It's a slow process. Now that's important to us because you're made up of a lot of water. So um, because you're made up of so much water, if, if water didn't uh, store heat effect, uh, efficiently, then the slightest change in temperature would instantly change your body and that instant change would be detrimental to your health. So the, the fact that you have a lot of water in you and it changes temperature slowly is very important to homeostasis, keeping the inside of your body the same, even though we live in a, much, uh, in a very changing environment. Two properties that you're probably familiar with, cohesion and adhesion. Cohesion is attraction between same substances. Uh, in this case, the water molecules are attracted to each other. Um, and we know this because they're polar. They have a negative and a positive side, so they're attracted through weak hydrogen bonds towards each other. So um, I like to think of this cohesion. Co means working together. We're going to cooperate. So water working with each other. This creates surface tension. You've probably seen this on a drink. You fill a glass up and you get a little bubble of water above the rim of the glass with water before it spills over the edge. That's surface tension. Adhesion is an attraction between different substances. And you see this when you um, are drinking out of a straw. If you look at the straw down inside the glass, there's a little uh, dip of, there's a little um, swell of water inside of that, or liquid inside of that straw that comes up a little bit outside of where the liquid level in the glass is. So this is adhesion. That, that water is actually being attracted to the side of the straw. We see it in nature with um, inside the plant, that's actually the process that the plant uses to take water from its roots up to its leaves. We also have um, water dissolves many substances. Okay, so this is important because uh, water is in and around you and inside of your cells, outside of your cells, and it dissolves many of the substances that your cells need, and that's how you transport them uh, through the substances of life. Well, it dissolves a lot of substances because it's polar. We keep going back to this. It's got a positive and negative charge. So anything that's ionic, like salt, sugar, uh, like salt, NaCl, um, anything that's polar that has a charge, slight charge, water will get in there and disrupt these molecules and cause that substance to dissolve away in water. But you put something nonpolar in it, and it doesn't dissolve as well. For instance, oil. You put oil inside of water, oil just sits right there on the surface. When we're talking about uh, water, one of some important uh, aspects of water are acids and bases. Acids and bases, um, you'll find these all throughout living things. And water molecules break to form hydrogen and hydroxide ions. So water will break, you can see that here, into hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion. Acids form when you get a high number of hydrogen ions in a solution. So if you have a, a compound that you put in water, and it causes there to be a lot of hydrogen ions floating around that water, that's an acid. If it causes a lot of hydroxide ions floating around, the OH negatives, then we call that a base. So sometimes we just refer to bases as reducing the amount of free hydrogen ions, and an acid increases them. Let's look at that. We look at a pH scale, that's actually what we use. 
to test whether something is a strong acid or a strong base. And it measures the hydrogen ion concentration. So if it's acidic, it's got a very low pH number, like battery acid at a zero. If it's basic, above seven, it has a high pH value, like 14. Um, and this is all based on a factor of 10, um, and we're not going to go into all the details with it right now. Seven is neutral, meaning there's as many hydrogen and hydroxide ions floating around. It's equal. Anything uh, from zero to, uh, to 6.9 would be an acid, and that means there's more hydrogen ions. Anything from 7.1 to 14 would be a base. That means there's more hydroxide ions or less hydrogen ions.